Well, now that we got like everything else figured out, let's go ahead and really just go right into the first part of what I wanted to kind of discuss was some of the new changes within the Guild Wars 2 uh, actual game this weekend. I'm not Yarl, but I made it. Welcome, Bill. Well, I guess so. I'll start and really kind of just give you guys the rundown. Like this weekend, ArenaNet decided to post on a Friday, which is not normal for them. They normally post on a Tuesday. However, the thing that they posted was actually quite... Let me turn this audio down real quick. <clears throat> Guild Wars 2 team released this letter here. And this letter really talks about some of the new changes within Fractals, which quite frankly, I personally don't do a lot of fractals. I've done fractals many times, but yeah, what ended up happening was they were trying to spread the love of the Mystic Coins that were pretty much because they're coming out with the new strike mission. So they want to kind of balance the economy here. And what they're going to do is they're going to adjust the economy for the Mystic Coins. They are the fundamental currency of Mystic Clo uh, Clovers and are used directly for legendary items. So within challenge modes 98, 99, and 100, you have a small chance of one, two, or three coins. Although this chance is random and unreliable, it adds up as many players take a challenge mode fractal consistently, making fractals the most efficient one-stop source for obtaining gold, Mystic Coins, and Clovers you need for legendary progression. So they want to spread the love to other types of content. That means that no single source should be in such high amounts of legendary resources at the same time. Pretty much they are taking away from what I can see is Mystic Clover purchased from Fractals now reset weekly. Now the cost of the Clovers you purchased from the Fractal Vendor has been adjusted to cost one less glob of Ecto and one more Mystic Coin. So the total cost per is now two Mystic Coins, two globs. All right. And they no longer have a chance to drop Mystic Coins. So that's kind of what... I think this is the one point that a lot of people started speculating. Yeah, there goes your gold dump. <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. A lot of people were kind of concerned that Fractals are pretty much not going to be farmable anymore. And ArenaNet did not do a very good job at explaining what they really meant. Until we go into this Reddit thread. Some of the new... You pre-ordered with your referral? Yeah, yeah, you did, Vel. I'm just asking if anyone else has pre-ordered it or not. Because if you're still looking to pre-order it, feel free to click the links in the About section for End of Dragons, and you can get the game there and support the stream. They made a post about pretty much addressing it, if you guys could find the post. Um, so they're not removing mystic coins what they essentially said that they're going to do is they're going to just change out the way that you get mystic coins so you still have a chance of getting them through fractals it's just not as much apparently and so getting that little bit of light i think uh yeah so the second post doesn't make sense you say yeah here we go clearing up some misconceptions from the weekend so this yeah this thing went wild by the way <laughs> I can't say that enough. It really did go insane on a lot of, I didn't think it was gonna be so much of an issue, but I saw way too many people kind of discussing it. And ultimately it's just big math here, right? Um, you're really kind of just getting a, a negative multiplier on the Mystic Coins themselves. So it makes it a little bit more stable. So essentially you're getting 0.7 Mystic Coins or, or I believe that's what it says. Um, yeah, so it's worth 0.72 less Mystic Coins. And then the Sunqua Peak is like 0.48 Mystic Coins. So effectively, it's just small, trivial math. But they're not really removing... One, they're not removing them. So here's the misconceptions, right? Misconception 1. Anet said, most Mystic Coins come from Fractal CMs. I was very unclear. I meant that they're one of the largest possible source that a single player can earn, right? In reality, 93% of Mystic Coins come from login rewards. The remaining 7% include sources such as Leyland Anomaly, 
World vs. World, Fractals, Mystic Forge, and Fractal CMs. By the way, the one thing that they actually missed on this is that remaining 7% of Mystic Coins, you get 5 Mystic Coins, I believe, just for participate, or for winning a daily AT, right? So you, they didn't, they clearly missed um, posting that you get them through automated tournaments. This will make Mystic Coins rare, they say. You probably have figured out the, from the details on how they drop from strikes already. But no, it's going to be the opposite. Strikes are going to be much more accessible, and they'll be played by significantly more people. I mean, that's what they hope, right? So they can't really say that people are actually going to be played playing strikes more. They can hope that people are going to play strikes more. And possibly by doing the Mystic Coin thing, that's how they're going to get the actual player base to do it. Because I feel like the Fractal CMs, I mean, it, it just depends on what the person's playing it for, ultimately. Anyways, again, earning the 40 Mystic Coins per week from Strikes will require completing Strikes twice a week for 4 weeks. This is much lower difficulty and effort than the Fractal CM. Of course it is. Oh, yeah, definitely want to make it easier for more casual players to make Legendaries. Alright, because they can do Strikes apparently. More expensive discounted Clovers will be double demand by Mystic Coins. A very small amount of Coins consumed each week were used on Fractal Vendor. One player, only players who played Fractal CMs really have the disposable excess Fractal Relics. Alright, I kind of wish that the direction was like you want to make content. I, I don't mind it, right? I personally don't mind the Mystic Coin change, um, but I feel like that needs to be kind of standardized across all game modes because like they say, right, if their target audience is not the hardcore players or the ones who want to do Fractal CMs and want to actually just play the game a little bit, then, I mean, the casuals can definitely get their coins a lot easier, so. You can totally just do T4. Does T4 give you coins? So, But from what I'm understanding is they are only changing, right, the 98, 99, and 100 CM drops. I don't know if they're changing the T4s. <laughs> What's up, uh, Alex? Yeah, so I guess their misconception is, isn't true, but I think what I was saying was it's ultimately what their direction that they want to go is. Like, for me, it seems very unclear. I don't know that this is going to fix anything, if I'm being quite honest. But... I mean, if they're going to just go in, they might as well, like, jump off the deep end at this point. Yeah, so many holes in the post. I mean, yeah, the the fact that they kind of left out that the remaining seven sources includes daily ATs. Yeah, it's pretty nice that they didn't stay silent, for sure. A lot of math. I don't know. I'm not a developer myself, but I think at the end of the day, it's just about the way, the direction of the game that they want to promote is. Additionally, you have the sweepstakes, right? They need to make a way for me to sell my clovers. I have way too many and I never use them. Yeah, you can make legendaries and sell them. It actually, I think it's like 1200 gold to make the legendary yourself. And then obviously, oh yeah, you don't play the game. <laughs> What's the point? But if you're looking to buy the expansion, you actually get entered into this Dragon's Legacy sweepstakes, right? The prizes aren't too bad. I actually, I mean, this is kind of a lot of money, in my opinion, for an uh, indie game company to be just dropping out for like the Irene prize pack. I think this is like one one person. Yeah, so Trip... So like pretty much if you get this one, you get to collaborate with the development team and creating a name or yeah, for a commemorative non-player. I'm definitely going to come up if I win this, like we're just going to name the character like Kiba, right? I want I want myself like immortalized in Guild Wars 2, so I'm going to make sure that that happens. And then <laughs> you played some last week, nice. 
trip for winter. So you go to ArenaNet in Bellevue, Washington, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, they pay for that. I bet you it's economy, but hey, you know what? Beggars can't be choosers, right? Arena Elder Premium Collectible Statue. That's pretty nice as well. The Hypercloud 2 branded Guild Wars 2 headset. And then some for fans, by fans, some other goods. This one, so I guess the Butterfingers is like for the consolation prize or something. Because Glint's prize pack, and I don't know why they did this way. They went with a really high price. Okay, and then like the price in the, this is like the medium price. Like this should be below here, I think. <laughs> but either way. Uh, portrait for the winner done by Arena Artist, printed canvas, and a sign member, a year supply. Of oh, there you go. There's the Butterfinger. So how do you win? Well, you already went to their office. Oh, wow. That's cool. Hard naming. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I've definitely. I, I mean, I could definitely go if I, I think partners have access to it, too. So, like, if I wanted to go to Washington, I could see it. But was it cool? The Butterfingers comes in the Glint prize pack, apparently. You get a year supply, which I can't eat. That's 432. How is that 432 full size bars in a single shipment? A year supply would be 365, right? I'm not crazy. You actually get the chair on the Glint prize pack, you don't get the chair here in the Arenes. And then you get some more of the same HyperX and then Funkos. The Krakatork prize here. An online gaming session. So this is the one that I'd actually want to win. You get uh, two to three hours playing with Guild Wars 2 with at least three members of the development team. So, and for the winner, one guess. So I'm definitely, if, if it was me, I would, I don't know how far this could go, but I would make them PVP with me for two to three hours and we would all be on Necro. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what my plan would be if I ended up winning this. I actually like this prize more. I don't really care for, for this one too much. Uh, maybe if I could name the character myself, but this one would be great content. And also you get like the laptop and I've been meaning to get a good laptop lately. How to enter, you got to pre-purchase the standard or ultimate edition of End of Dragons. Use the referral link down below for that. And, um... After that, be opted in to receive email newsletters, which you can do just by signing into your Guild Wars 2 account right here. And then there's going to be like a thing where you opt into their emails. So 